as they come along. And uh, our first selection will be number 530. Yeah, that's a little better. Uh, uh, we will uh, uh, sing hymn number 530, a hymn of glory, let us sing, number 530. <laughs> In the name of the Father, <clears throat> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty ever-living God, who willed that through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased to pray, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body and so approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to reshare at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation, and where he head where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. May be seated. A first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he has suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which they, you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit when it comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men 
dressed in white garments stood beside them, they said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the greatest King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise, sing praise to our King, uh, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For King of all the earth, is God, sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy. A blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? 
in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any, any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Do you believe that Jesus ascended into heaven on a cloud? Do we really believe that Jesus, the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, ascended into heaven with his own power? Very good. Or do you think, or do we doubt do we think that he left on a jet plane? Like the song says, I'm leaving on a jet plane, jet plane, and I don't know when I'm coming back again. We don't know when Jesus is coming back again, but he didn't leave on a jet plane. He left on a cloud with his own power, and he went up into heaven. 
And as he left to heaven, he gave this mission to the apostles, the mission to bring hope to the world, to bring the good news. And what are, what are these good news that we're supposed to bring to everybody? We, we talk about it all the time, but what, what, is, what are those good news that we're supposed to bring to everyone? It's very simple. God loves us so much that he sent his only son to die for us. And the son willingly and voluntarily descended and he humiliated himself and became like one of us. That's how humble God is. And that's the message, the, the summary of our good news that we're supposed to bring to the world. God loves us so much that he gave up his only son. And the son, being God himself, voluntarily gave up his own life so that we can have life eternal. It's very simple. But how do we do that in today's world that is full of so many ideologies and politics and all kinds of things and everybody thinks it's right. Everybody thinks that they have, they have life eternal. But is it true? How do we bring this good news and make, him, make this good news concrete in our lives? Perhaps we could imitate the first Christians. You, the first Christians, if you remember, live, they were a very small minority living in the Roman Empire, very pagan empire. And this small minority transformed the Roman Empire. They Christianized it. How did they do that? And we are invited and called to do the same. Today we live in a different empire, a different kind of empire of the world. And we're still called to bring this good news and transform the society, the culture, and make it into a Christian culture into a Christian society. And we're not going to uh, bring this good news, smacking people with a Bible over the head, or with a book of catechism. It doesn't matter if we know everything about the church and the Bible. That's what St. Vincent de Paul figured out when he turned away his own father after walking so many, so many miles to go visit him in seminary when he was the chair of theology as a priest. And because his family was so poor, he was ashamed of his own father and he turned them away. He said, I don't know you because all the seminary thought that he was this uh, priest who came from a rich family. So when his dad went back, his dad, after a few weeks, he died. And they sent him a letter to St. Vincent de Paul, and before he was St. Vincent de Paul, he wasn't so holy then. But when he received the letter of the news of his father dying, he thought, and he cried to God, and he said, what good is it that I am the smartest theologian in this place? What does it matter that I know everything about the Bible and the church dogmas and teachings if I don't have love? If I don't even, if I cannot even love my own father enough to have recognized him, he didn't even let him stay in the seminary. So we're not going to bring the good news with throwing Bibles and catechism books at people's heads or getting into debates and arguments. I think that we will have a better chance of bringing this good news like the first Christians. They were really helping each other. They were together as a, a family. And we can read that, those stories in the Acts of the Apostles, how they would all get their monies together and their properties. And the apostles were the first administrators so that everybody could have what they needed. And they really loved each other and showed each other love as friends, as family. And that's what 
people looking from outside from the Roman Empire, they thought they look so happy and they look like they really like each other, like they love each other. And that's how they transformed the Roman Empire into a Christian empire. And I think we, can, we should do the same today. And since it is Mother's Day, it comes to mind the tender, loving mercy of a mother. I know some of your mothers, it, sometimes perhaps you want to strangle your kids, but at the end of the day, you still forgive them and you love them and you embrace, embrace them in your hearts and in your love. And even if your kid is not the sharpest tool in the toolbox, to you, mom, he is or she is. A, a mother forgives, a mother forgets, a mother loves unconditionally. Even God compares his love to a mother. In Isaiah 40, in the chapter 49 of Isaiah, he says, even if a mother could forget you, I will never forget you. He didn't say even if a husband forgets you or a, if a wife forgets you. He said, even if a mother forgets you, I will not forget you. God has this mercy, maternal mercy as well. And I think if we bring this unconditional love, unconditional mercy and forgiveness to each other in our everyday life, I think that's the best way to bring the good news to the world. A tenderly and loving mercy, a maternal mercy to the world. We can invite people to our faith with our life. We don't even have to say anything as Saint Francis of Assisi would say, go on and evangelize the world and speak if you need to. So we're <clears throat> in today's readings in gospel, we are reminded that we have a mission to evangelize the world, to bring this good news to the world, to invite others to this beautiful world of our faith, of our Catholic faith. And so that's why on Tuesday, we're beginning again the OCIA, Order of Christian Initiation for Adults. If you have any friends or anybody that is curious about our faith, it's a good opportunity to invite them and, and look and, and see, and maybe they will believe. They will see the truth and the beauty of our faith. So do you believe that Jesus ascended into heaven on a cloud with his own power? I hope you do, because there's no jet planes in heaven. The jet planes don't go to heaven. Dogs and cats, maybe they do. Do we believe that he ascended into heaven? Do we believe in this God that was eternal? and became a mortal being in Jesus for us? Do we believe in this God that turned suffering into consolation? Do we believe in this God that was infinitely poor and infinitely rich and made himself poor for us? Do we believe in this God that defeated death, turned death into eternal life? Do we believe in this God, in Jesus Christ, that ascended into heaven so that, we could, so that he could stay with us in the sacraments? Do we believe in this merciful and loving God that he came down to, to, to earth, became like one of us, and died for our salvation? Do we really believe? Do we live our life as if we believed.
believe, Holy Ghost, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's love and mercy and closeness to us, we now present Him with our needs and the needs of the church. That the church continue to proclaim the gospel message in of our ascended Savior, sharing his message of gladness and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our leaders work in service of justice, ever striving toward peace and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the oppressed and downtrodden feel the comforting presence of God renewing their strength and their sense of worth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the OCIA inquiry sessions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to war and violence throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful of this community of St. Paul Cathedral be filled with grace and a hunger for wisdom, rejoicing in the saving power of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join us in singing the operatory hymn number 674, We Walk by Faith, number 674.
his hands at side, nor follow where he trod. But in his promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord, my God. Help then, O Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith to call on you when you are near and seek you where you are found. That when our life of faith is done in realms of clear light, we may be hold you as you are with full Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, we offer a sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder, mediator between God and men, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Oh, no. 
You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, <clears throat> on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new <clears throat> and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed unto us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes that the needs of our brothers and sisters inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. gift to you. Change our hearts, fill us with peace. Transform our lives anew. Open our eyes so that we might see your presence in one another. Poured out in love today, unites us all in you. Loving Lord, Creator God, open our eyes to see the good that lives in each. 
each of us that called the world to be. And when we fail to see the good, when friendships falter and crumble, give us the courage to forgive that we may live in peace. Living Word, O oh Son of God, your lotions us the and joy belong now to us by conquering death and rising to new life we become a people of praise worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive to believe, to create the goodness of God. Worthy are you, O risen Christ, wonders and signs revealing your might, your power and glory shine upon our lives. We become 
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who allowed us on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, the Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for coming and praying together as a family that we are, family and friends. Thanks to everyone who serves, our cantors, our lectors, everybody, even our music director, our best music director that we have. Let's thank them all for the round of applause. <laughs> even our holy deacon is with us today. Thank you very much. So thank you for coming to Mass. It is the third commandment anyway, so you have to come. And uh, we should come out of love. But, you know, it's also good to come with, if we don't want to, if we don't feel like going to Mass, well, we go to Mass even if we don't feel like it. But t uh, next Sunday, we celebrate the Pentecost. And um, I, I'm, I'm working on a surprise, but I can't tell you because then it won't be a surprise. But if you come to Mass, next Sunday you might find a cool surprise. So invite all your friends even if they're not Catholic, because it's going to be a cool surprise. So, if you don't want to come, if you don't feel like coming next Sunday, come for the surprise. Okay. So, thank you very much. I don't think we have any more announcements besides uh, the OCIA on Tuesday at 7. So, if you have any friends, too, that you want to invite to, to see our faith, they might see and believe, like the psalm says. So, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a, a wonderful Sunday, and happy Mother's Day. Let's give a, an applause to our mothers. <laughs> Don't party too much today, okay? Tomorrow's, tomorrow's Monday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Our recessional hymn is number five hundred and twenty nine. That's five two nine. 
Hail the day that sees him rise, number 529. Hail. 